Hi, this is Margo. This is Sunday evening, June the 4th, 2023. I hope everyone is safe and doing as well as possible. And as another week has passed, and um, this will be my weekly update that I'll be putting on YouTube for everyone. So I'd like to welcome everyone to the show tonight. And, um, you know, things are only getting worse, it looks like. And so <clears throat> this is going to be my weekly update on climate-related items and methane and sea ice. We'll look at Arctic and Antarctic sea ice earthquakes, and I want to start off by um, looking at these Canada fires, or Canadian fires. This is from Zoom Earth. This is live satellite imagery, but I've got it, um, I moved it back to 3.30 this afternoon, and see all these red spots these are fires that have lit up all the way across Canada and see the there are little red dots for heat that are not humongous fires yet but you know they're in the works too but um, these are all out of control nothing is contained um, like this Shaw fire is 445,000 acres out of control. Smith fire, this one's almost a million acres now. It's 931,000 acres out of control. The Cray fire. 175,000 acres out of control. These are all out of control. And um, the smoke, you can see the smoke. And the smoke is already going up into the Arctic. Um, here's another big one. HWF 30 fire, 235,000 acres out of control. Look at these. This is just, um, see the red, this is just massive, massive complex of fires. This is heat all around, and here are the fires, out of control, out of control, and the uh, Tarsians region is uh, right I think it's right up here. So if those catch fire, which I don't see why they wouldn't, um, it they'll just keep burning. There's it's it's full of petroleum. It'll just burn. Can't put those out. And you can see the smoke. Let's see, so <clears throat> that's early. And look at all these red reds. Oops, down here in Mexico, that's heat. I don't know if these are little fires or, you know, what constitutes a heat signature here, but. Um, it's not looking good. <clears throat> so I wanted to show that to start off with. And now let's uh, go through Climate Reanalyzer. This is 2 meter maximum temperatures around the globe today. And see this green over the Arctic. This is above freezing anything. And the green color, green tint, is above freezing. And 
so a lot, most of the Arctic Ocean, the air over it is above freezing. Here it's down in the blues, um, aquas and blues over the um, East Siberian Sea and Chukchi Sea, but then greens. And see the reds coming all the way up through Canada up to the Arctic coastline there. Then we've got deep reds coming through the south and the west. Here's whites in Mexico into Central America and Belize. And the whites are uh, 40 degrees C or higher or about 104 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. And here's whites through Northern Africa, Saudi Arabia, Iran. All this Middle East area is now turning into whites. And India is filled up. We've got some whites in Southern Asia. Here's 2 meter temperature anomaly for today. And see the reds here in northern Russia. This has been uh, holding in this area really for the last week and it's spreading out reds and browns. The dark red, that's about 18C higher than normal. We've got browns coming all the way across Russia. Here's browns coming across the Arctic Ocean, and look at the reds in northern Canada, and then browns, and then blues next to all of the reds and browns. Here's the flat view. See, here's blues over western Russia and the east, east side of the picture here, blues. And we're seeing reds here in the Antarctic again. This is over the Weddell Sea and the western peninsula. And it's dark down here, but um, we're uh, the nighttime layer is working now on NASA Worldview, so uh, we'll be able to get some pretty good pictures of of what the ice looks like down there tonight too. Here's our overview worldwide. We're at point six C higher than normal. The northern hemisphere is up. 0.82 C. The Arctic is up 1.31 C. The Antarctic is down 2.65 C. Southern Hemisphere is up 0.38 C. And the tropics are up 0.66 C. So, Arctic and Northern Hemisphere are the ones to watch. Here's precipitation and clouds. The green is rain and the blue is snow and there's been precipitation around the southern coastline of Greenland this week and melting. One day it spiked up. Um, it was about at 13% melt extent. <clears throat> and here's rains in Russia and here's look at this rain on the coastline of the Laptev Sea here's snow here's the flat view of the rains Here's the Pacific view. 
and there's rain. See this little line? This is in the Drake Passage, and um, it's rain coming down to the western peninsula of the Antarctic. Here are the jet pieces, and um, it looks worse every time we look at this. There's a definite, at least two or three different lines here in the northern hemisphere. Let's see how they're looping up and down and hairpin turns and breaks, things. Southern hemisphere looks pretty bad too. Here's sea ice and snow cover, and we can see this North Baffin Bay is opening up really fast. That's all open there. Uh, the northern part of the Hudson Bay is open. These little gulfs and tributaries are melting fast. This Munston Gulf um, just off of the Beaufort Sea is opening up. The Bering Strait is open. We're seeing melting um, on this east side of Greenland. See the jagged edges there. That's melting. And heavy melt here in the North Barents Sea uh, along Novaya Zemlya coming up there. That's heavy melt. Here's sea surface temperature anomaly. This is as of yesterday. And see along this Russian coastline in the Barents Sea, this is heating up. That's deep brown and moving into reds there. So that's um, 4 to 5C, higher than normal. And we've got blues right next to them. Um, these Great Lakes are turning brown in the U.S. This Gulf of California is all brown. Okay, this is the Atlantic view. And here's this big blob forming. Um, just off the coast of Spain and Africa and Portugal. We can see the Mediterranean is uh, turning brown further in. Here's the Black Sea. It's got some brown. Caspian Sea is getting browns. The Red Sea, brown. Persian Gulf. Here's this evil eye in the Arabian Sea. And then on the Pacific, we've got this evil eye off the west coast of South America. And see the browns coming all the way across. So warmer than normal where these trade winds come across the Pacific. And we've, we're waiting to see an evil eye form at least one, probably two, up here in the North Pacific. <coughs> and El Nino is coming in. So, um, things are not looking very good. <coughs> now we'll move on to the methane data. We're going to start with the NOAA methane data. This is for yesterday, the 3rd, and um, there was no data for the Met-Op-B satellite for 
any anything so that ought be in the morning on the third thousand millibar image unavailable that's what it means when there's no data here in the afternoon same thing no data here's the met ought be 487 millibar in the morning no data and in the afternoon no data so we've just got met op c data for yesterday and here we are for the third in the morning met op c satellite at the thousand millibar level the mean or average was 1842 parts per billion the high reading was 2156 and in the afternoon the mean was 1843 the high reading was 2133 <coughs> then on the 487 millibar level met op C in the morning the mean was 1882 the high reading was 2334 and see all this pink across the arctic that's that range that's the highest range right down here that's between 2000 and whatever is the highest number here here it is 2334 parts per billion <coughs> and lots of pinks across North America, North, uh, Northern Hemisphere and in the afternoon the mean was 1882 the high reading was 2284 <coughs> and um, so I did not update my uh, weekly chart here because there was um, the last two days we've had so much missing data that um, it's it's not accurate and well not that what we've got is accurate but um, so here here was where I'm tracking what we've got this was for the um, Met Op C satellite, 1000 millibar, so that was 1842.5 average. And then the day before, um, there was no data for the Met Op B satellite in the afternoon. So out of four readings, one was not there. So I took the uh, data they had divided it by three and that averaged out to be 1833.67 but I'm beginning to think that maybe this met op b satellite is is going to be phased out because we saw similar things happen with the Met Op A satellite, remember when that was phased out and it started having like days and days of no data and uh, it was it was really weird looking and then they retired it and then we just had um, like for a whole year we only had the Met Op met up B satellite data but at least it was consistent so um, so I know last week I asked for people's advice on what to do about the um, the all the gray gray area and showing um, QC fail and the fact that you know 
these numbers can't be accurate when you've got that much data that's not there. And um, Larry said just to keep tracking the data and reporting on it, whatever it is, and so that we can see what they're doing. And I tend to agree with him because th that's, you know, this is what we've got. And then um, Phytologics said that, um, you know, with all that gray data, gray or gray reading, that it's not enough to have an accurate reading, which I agree. And then he left another comment saying that new caps was up with methane data. And I looked at it and it's a different system and um, they don't have a mean value, they have highs and lows and then they've got ranges for the colors and so I don't think I don't think that's that's gonna be something I can really use but um, but thanks for the suggestions and now I'm tending to think that I should just break out the MetOpC data and kind of track that separately because that's that's kind of been consistent so that's that's my thought right now so um, here is 487 millibar last week and see how it went down 7.25 supposedly there in one week and um, again you know so much missing data that we know this isn't accurate and oh I forgot to show like what it was doing this week before Met Op B kind of went defunct on us. Um, the 27th, that was after the big, the big cool down, it was 1834.75. And then the 28th went up 0.5. 29th went down 2.0, 30th went up 1.0, 31st went up 1.75, then the first went down 2.75, and so at, at the first we were st still down 1.5 this week, but that's not a full week that's only five days so I'm not I'm not gonna add it to the chart we'll just skip a week and um, so here's 487 level so last week we ended at 1887.5 and then on the 28th it went up 1.0 29th down 1.0, 30th up 1.5, 31st up 2.5, and 1st down 1.75. And at this point, we ha we're at an increase of 2.0 for this week. So, I don't know. It, you can't track it if the data is not there. It's just it's just not possible. If it's not going to be consistent, so anyway, now we'll move to CAMS. This is Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Services methane forecast. And 
Our base time and valid time are both for Saturday, June the 3rd. We're starting on the Arctic area and surface level. So the data is for Saturday and the forecast period is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <coughs> So, here in the Scandinavian area, this is coming back to life all the way over to Western Russia. See, this tends to be heavy, heavy methane in the summertime. I think there's some wetlands up there, that, so that would be big methane producing area. And this interior here, that's, see it's kind of spreading out with the high readings. A little bit more further east as well. Um, and not only is Canada on fire, but there are fires already going in Russia as well. Here's Koktovik coming back to life. The southern part of Alaska we're seeing more methane as this warms up and the perma there's a lot of permafrost and as that thaws out it releases a lot of methane. And then you can see all across Canada these methane readings Look at this, just south of the Hudson Bay. Here's North Dakota, and the U.S. is looking worse. They just finished getting rain from the middle of the country over. And so, with the rain and heating up, um, it's going to be pretty blobby. this whole eastern sea coast see that's that's a blob there west texas there's california there's that now we'll go to the north pole view <clears throat> and we've got the green waves coming across. See where they're coming out from the land. That's high, high methane when it's got waves coming out like that. Here's the UK and Ireland. They're filled up. Europe is um, lower than, than we've seen it in a in a while. I mean, it's been low for a while now. Here's the Persian Gulf. See how it spills over onto the land. Here's India. And see the green spilling over over the ocean. Here's China. Korea, Japan, and I mean it's heavy, but I've seen worse. I've seen it worse here. When it gets hot, and then the dark waves moving out from the coastline, you know you're in my high methane then. 
Now we'll go to the global view. And uh, that navy blue has now gone away. The 1820 color, well, it just pops in momentarily over Australia like one time it looks like so, or a couple of times here and but the so virtually the uh, main background color here in the southern hemisphere is 1840 parts per billion and then we're seeing higher see the lighter reading uh, the lighter aqua color that's 1860 and so the higher reading is creeping further south see here's 1860 here and it's streaming off of Australia New Zealand Africa South America as well So there's that. Now we'll look at 500 HPA. So we're seeing uh, lighter colors here across the Arctic region. Uh, here's a lot lighter. This is in the yellow zone moving into yellow and green and this is where is this <coughs> this is in uh, the north over the North Baffin Bay at Greenland and see the dark is breaking up moving further south but look at this these dark areas down here this is over Africa. This is um, this is over Madagascar, and then this area just just west of Australia. So we're seeing higher readings further south, and everything kind of redistributes when you go to a new season. Here's total column and here's the big blob. Um, it's solid here from China across southern Asia over into eastern India and then here over the um, Bengal Bay and here over northern India then all the reds and oranges there so there's that and then a couple of more things from CAMS that I track here's sulfur dioxide today our highest reading is still here um, near Mexico this is from the Popocatapetl volcano going off but it's it's gone down quite a bit see this is hanging around at 500 HPA that's that's our highest area and here's the ozone over the Antarctic today and right here this kind of purplish blue area with the thick black line around it this denotes between 200 and 220 Dobson units and this in the danger zone that's what the black line around it means and um, then around that is aqua and then 
greens over over the majority of the Antarctic and then we've got some breaks here and here then some reds on, on the fringe reds and yellows the yellow is 200 Dobson units and I'm sorry 300 Dobson units and that's considered to be average or a decent decent thickness but look at all the aqua holes and we saw we saw a whole, couple of holes open up this week over the Weddell Sea so this could be the same hole just kind of rotating around and what happens is this is an area that's so thin and then it'll close up and as this air is circulating around around the continent and then it'll open up again but this thin area kind of stays it you know with the rotation it rotates around with it. Here's the Arctic ozone, Arctic view, and here's where see the greenish. This is then from Canada up. Well, that's from the North Dakota region up. And then here across Russia, where we've seen high methane methane will thin down the ozone layer definitely also sulfur dioxide will do it oops and here's the global view for the ozone see the big break here coming up in the Indian Ocean And all these greens still around the mid latitudes. And that's all of those. Now I'm going to take a little break and then come back with sea ice. Okay, I'm back and now. We'll move on to sea ice, and we're starting with the U.S. Navy website, um, Arctic sea ice model here. This is Arctic sea ice thickness, and the color ledger is on the right, going um, backwards or forwards in the rainbow from thickest to thinnest and there's very little um, 5 meter uh, up to the aqua which is about 2 to 2.5 two meters thick very little in the ranges there and you can see that most of the ice is in some shade of aqua and see the darker aqua that means it's thinning down and um, so down here you can see the where it's melted here in the Hudson Bay and in this gulf and in these tributaries these are opening up pretty fast here here in the North Baffin Bay that's completely open and coming along um, this part of the Northwest Passage and then here in the Munston Gulf you can see that's open and that's really opened up just in the last I don't know 10 days or so and the jagged edge around Greenland this is melting of course they've had weather rain and snow coming up to the coastline and snow on on the continent 
so <coughs> um, anyway then it's thinning here and um, retreating here in the North Barents Sea and way up here north of Novaya Zemlya here in the Kara Sea we can see it's melted all around Novaya Zemlya and it's opening up really fast and then uh, this is well let's zoom in a little more see here's a hole above Franz Josef land here's Severnaya Zemlya and it's open here on the left side and uh, this is the Laptev Sea and we can see all around the coast how that's melting we've got large open areas here now and this is thinned way down in the Laptev Sea this is into the dark blue now and that's about um, 1.25 meters thick right in here and here's a hole near New Siberian Islands and thinning around and it's open just west of Wrangell Island here's the Bering Strait and just fringe eyes out here eyes out here in the Bering Sea and then the thinning is the big deal here you can see um, the brightest aqua this is between two to two and a half meters thick along here and then the green is about three meters thick not much of that just above Greenland in Canada and a little bit of thicker ice here in the Beaufort Sea here's the 30 day animation and this was updated to today and the data goes back three weeks and the forecast period goes out to next Sunday so let's watch this bottom part first the Hudson Bay wow look look how much that's almost totally melted by next Sunday see that so a lot of melting to happen this week and here in the North Baffin Bay see this is I mean that's open and just it's uh, retreating further south too and you can see the movement of the ice here through these tributaries and see it's exiting uh, coming coming through these little openings from the Arctic and through this one you can see and through this is the nearest strait it's also streaming down um, on this east side of Greenland in the Fram Strait okay now let's go up here This kerosene is in high melt, and here in the lap tab it's coming along. And then look at the shades of aqua changing to darker areas. And then here in the Chukchi Sea, that's 
that's moving into blue. So we'll stop it. Here we are at the end of the forecast period. So next Sunday and um, see the dark aqua. So that's where it's thinning the most. Where it goes to dark aqua and blue and then to purple and lavender and then nothing. Here's the Beaufort Sea. <coughs> we also saw last week um, on NASA Worldview that the ice was already breaking up. I mean, you could see visibly how it was breaking up just um, kind of southeast of the North Pole and um, we're going to see more of that break up today. Here's the Beaufort Sea, sea ice thickness. So here's Canada on the right and the reds. See that's diminishing the ice drift when it pushes the ice towards the coastline, then whatever's in these openings will get squished down into the tributary. And also, then when the ice drift pulls back out, then that thick ice is gone because it gets kind of pulled apart. Here's this Munston Gulf that's opened up. Here's the coastline of Alaska. Here's this thinning in the Chukchi Sea. And the 30-day animation, and again, this was updated to today. So the forecast period goes out to next Sunday. Now, as you watch this um, getting darker, see the lines, see the lines here? That's representative of the leads. Here I paused it. This is um, the leads, the long lines of thinner ice in between the thicker ice. And so um, those those open up when you have ice drift. And then it closes back up. There we are at the end of the model. So this is the forecast to next Sunday and see it's pulling away from the coastline here. And so on, then thinner ice down here um, by the coastline of Canada and Alaska. And then thinning, see the darker colors coming in. It's, stu it's still got some greens, but it, that's three meters thick. Here's the Antarctic. Now, they're supposed to be in a refreeze. It's slow going. The majority of the thicker ice is here along this western peninsula in the Weddell Sea. And that's the aqua, which is two to two and a half meters thick. Very little ice that's thicker than that anywhere down here. And then you've got your lavenders all around. And it's thickening up a little bit more here in the Ross Sea. <coughs> and here's the 30-day animation. And again, the forecast period goes out to next Sunday.
So there's that. Here's National Snow and Ice Data Center. This is Arctic Sea Ice Concentration. And it's as of yesterday. All these blues, that's where it's melting. And then the black areas, that's open water. Except for this black dot at the North Pole. And um, the brown line is the median. See, we're well under the median here in this North Baffin Bay, see? Also here in the Barents Sea and Kara Sea. So all the blues are where it's melting now. And here's the extent chart for the melt. This blue line is this year. The dotted line is 2012. We're still below 2012 and well below the median. Here's the Antarctic and here in the Weddell Sea it's well below normal or median. Also out here by this western peninsula. And here is the refreeze and um, this blue line is this year. Here's last year and last year was well under the year before and we are well under the year before again here this this year so uh, okay here's Greenland here was the melting for yesterday and um, see the orange and it's all along this southern edge and this a few dots um, you can see the dots the orange dots also orange dots up on this north end as well here are the cumulative melt days so far for this year and um, it was in here where it melted a couple of days ago that high melt of about 13 percent. So even if it's one day, you know, it'll get a blue rating like here. If it's one day of melt. Here's the chart for the extent. <coughs> Here was the spike. <coughs> it was, I don't know, two or three days ago. See, that's about 13%. Then it went down, went back up, and then it went down. But it's not at the bottom, but we're about at, I don't know, 3% melt right now. 2 to 3% melt. That's all of those. Now, we'll move on to NASA Worldview. And I wanted to start here in the Antarctic and see the black. This is the area where it's dark now. So the whole car continent is in the dark and here we're going to turn on the nighttime layer earth at night and look i mean this is this is an amazing amazing view um yeah lots of detail here and Here's the ice. This is the Weddell Sea. 
here's this uh, Western Peninsula here. Here. It's over here. It's hard to see with that cloud there. Let's come on down. I've got um, sh some pretty shocking imagery of Pine Island Glacier. Where is it? down here. Here's Pine Island Glacier. There's a cloud over it right now. Look at this open water. Um, you would think this would have all refrozen by now, but it hasn't. And it's it's um, pulling out and, and it's coming apart. Um, all, all the way down and then right over here here's Thwaites Glacier and um, there's where it refroze and look at this all this, these big huge cracks it's it's moving down it's shifting and I'll show you we'll go back Now some of these, this this is not looking great at nighttime layer, but you get the general idea. And see here, it was more solid ice that was on the first. Here's the second. Let's see, see this was more solid here on the second, and. See, there was ice coming up to the glacier here, Pine Island. But see these big cracks? See, it's coming apart. It's, it's pulling down. I mean, it looks, it looks like it's melting, but it was yesterday and See these big cracks that opened up? And then here it is today. And the cracks are wider. See? So something, something is up down here. And then on the southern end, Here's this whole thing. This is the ice in the Ross Sea all the way out here. And it's not real thick, but I mean, it's, at least it's there. And see how it thins as it's coming up to the ice shelf. And there's open water right around the ice shelf. And here's Ross Island and Mount Erebus Volcano. That's quite the view today, isn't it? Right up here. That's McMurdo Research Station. So, this has some ice. It's pretty thin. And then coming on down. Here's the southeast edge. See the ice now? See, that's just wispy. It's almost nothing there. Here's the Toten Glacier. This area is not frozen completely, it looks like. Here's a good view from the second. So, uh, it might be wispy ice, but this whole area, I guess, is just too warm for it to freeze. 
there's the glacier that looks about the same Totem Glacier so and see it's open right over here to the right so I think this ice is kind of struggling Here's the east side, and here's the fringe ice. Not much here. And then here's the Amory ice shelf. And here's the ocean. There's some ice. Pretty thin right up here. A little bit thicker further south. And then coming up. I wonder what that light's from. Then around the coast. See. See all around the coast. See it's open water. It, it's not freezing right up to the coast. I'm thinking because of it's warmer. Here's the Brunt Ice Shelf. It, I mean, it doesn't look the same, does it? Here was the outline of the old ice shelf. And look how all that's gone in. Here's yesterday. See this open water? See? Can't really see much here. There's a crack. Back to today. And here's the Weddell Sea. We're back, back to where we started from. Let's see, here's the ice. <coughs> Now we'll go to the Arctic. And here we are for today. Here's sea ice concentration. So, um, see these reds and pinks? That's where it's melting. And once you get into yellows and greens, you've got open water. There's that. Alright, now let's just go in on the satellite view. We're starting here just above Greenland. This is the Lincoln Sea. And look how this is melting. There are some pieces of ice in there, but um, that thinner ice is all melted and now see it's coming apart further out see that's see this was intact this little ledge was intact two days ago look at this crack coming up so <coughs> see um anyway don't want to get distracted here so Lincoln Sea it's warmer than normal obviously here's the nearest strait and where it opens 
this opens into the uh, North Baffin Bay. And just a little bit of fringe ice here. Look how open all of this is. And normally we see it, um, we don't see all this open here in the North Baffin Bay. Normally there's ice up here. So this is kind of a first. I mean, since I've been watching it, then these tributaries, let's see, it's hard to tell where everything is. And then, let's go over here. So here's the Hudson Bay. And see that it's all melted here at the north and the west. And <coughs> see it's kind of changing colors. I'm wondering if that's some smoke that's coming over it. Here's, look, we can see smoke here. See, that's smoke. That's, see that dark brown? That is dense, dense heavy smoke. Okay, so where were we? And, um, let's see. Okay, this is one of the Northwest Passage areas here. And the Munston Gulf is this area. Look how this is just, there's no end in sight, see? We've got cracking starting down here today. And the blue, that's, it's melted a lot. When you see it turning blue, that means it's thinning and melting. So, let's go back and see. This has just come apart so fast. So here it was on May 20th, and it was already open a lot here, but watch, see the cracks, see these big cracks for me, that's on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, see the cracks down here for me, and Looking through this cloud, you can see on the 25th how it's breaking up and moving out. 26th, that's a good view. Watch. 27th, there it goes. 28th, look, this whole big area down here came apart on the 28th. See, it was just starting. Uh, see, it had cracks in it on the 27th. Here's the 28th. Huge area. Okay, and um, here's the 29th. Here's another ridge coming off. <coughs> 30th. Look at this. Look how this opened up from one day, the 29th to the 30th. That's unbelievable. There's the first, second, I mean there's the first, second, and look at the cracking this is doing. So this is melting super fast. Look at this. This whole thing cracked up. And then today, there's a cloud over a lot of it. But, 
Yeah, look at this yesterday. This is in high, high melt, folks. That's not looking good. And see here, smoke. Look at this dark brown. That smoke coming up. See the blues here? Okay, let's move on. Here's the Beaufort Sea, and you see this. This looks more intact than what we just finished looking at. Here's the Chukchi Sea. Here's the Bering Strait. See, that's open. Here's New Siberian Islands. Here's the Latev Sea. And right up next to it, see the blue. So that's thinning down. That This little shelf thing is going to go. Can't see anything today. And here's Tamir Peninsula. Here's Severnai Zemlya. Here's today. And here's the hole on the west side. Same thing over here. Look at these blues coming in. <coughs> All I can think is is just thinning down so fast that um, you know a lot of it is really thin, and then when that goes, then you've got like all these pic pieces of ice just jostling around. coming around. Here's Franz Joseph Land. And here's Svalbard. This is open on the south side. And so on there. And here's this fringe ice on the east side of Greenland. And around the tip and then on the west side <clears throat> and you see the gray that's the ice where it's melted down and then instead of it being pure white it turns into this kind of nondescript gray color All right, now let's look at the interior. Okay, here are my cracks starting up there. And then see the cracks coming over. <coughs> okay, here's the North Pole. And, um, see the ice and see these big long cracks so this is melting at the North Pole we can see it it's not solid at all see these pieces so this is a huge area that we're seeing just come apart very fast here. <coughs> and so on. And 
And then, where were we? I think we've already covered this. Back up to Canada, yeah. <coughs> and see these cracks? Uh, now these are frozen right now. That's why they're like, like that light, light gray. And then it means that they're frozen in between. And so I think that's about all we can see here. And now <coughs> we'll move on to earthquakes. <coughs> We've got 226 earthquakes worldwide right now. In the last 24 hours, these big dots are fives. See, then the small, these smaller dots are fours, and we got a five and fours here in South America. Now, what is he mean? Um, we saw, th we saw swarming here at the geysers yesterday of 113 so they've gone down a lot they're only 38 now there and here here we're still getting some small earthquakes in Lake Almanor in Northern California the largest was this 3.0 came in today just after midnight, 12.03 a.m. Pacific Time, and the depth is a negative 1.4 kilometer deep. So, go figure. Then here, next to Reno, um, there's, this area out here is called Cold Springs. And there's only three there. They were small in the ones. <coughs> so we're seeing um, instead of swarming, it's a lot of clusters, really. Like five here, ten there, and so on. <clears throat> now let's turn on <clears throat> all magnitudes. Let's see. All magnitudes for the last seven days. <clears throat> Okay, there were 2,413 recorded here in the last seven days. We had one Arctic earthquake of 4.3 in the Greenland Sea. <coughs> Here's a 5.0 off the coast of Ecuador. And fives and a four there in the Indian Ocean. Oh yeah, I'm doing this. And a little more here along this Cocos Plate. Here's a 5.0 and 5.0. I mean 4.0. Gigido Islands region. And I think that's about it. <clears throat> All right. So So that's my report for tonight. <clears throat> 
And now we'll bring it back to the spiritual perspective and we're making our way through the book of Job <clears throat> in the Bible. Job chapter 34 Furthermore, Elihu answered and said, Hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, ye that had knowledge. For the ear trieth words, as the mouth tasteth meat. Let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job hath said, I am righteous, and God hath taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right? My wound is incurable without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water, which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity, and walketh with wicked men? For he hath said, It profiteth a man nothing that he should delight himself with God. Therefore hearken unto me, ye men of understanding. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man shall, be, shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yes, surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment, who hath given him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again into dust. <clears throat> if now thou hast understanding, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hateth right forgiven and wilt thou condemn him that is most just? Is it fit to say to a king, Thou art wicked, and to princes, ye are ungodly? How much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor? For they all are the work of his hands. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand, for his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his things. There is no darkness nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he will not lay upon man more than right, that he should enter into judgment with God. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number, and set others in their stead. Therefore he knoweth their works, and he overturneth them in the night, so that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked men, in the open sight of others, because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he heareth the cry of the, of the afflicted. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. <clears throat> Surely, 
Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I had borne chastisement. I will not offend any more that which I see not teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should it be according to thy mind, he will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose. And not I, therefore, speak what thou knowest. Let men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. Job hath spoken without knowledge, and his words were spoken without wisdom. My desire is that Job may, may be tried unto the end because of his answers for cr wicked men, for he added rebellion unto his sin. He clapped his hands among this, among us, and multiplied the words against God. Job chapter 34 So, if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, I recommend it before it's too late. So, I love you all and I'm praying for you. And I hope everyone has a decent week. And Lord willing, I'll be here next week to give you another update. So, God bless you. Go in peace. And I will talk to you soon. Good night.